Hi everybody, it's Professor Mitchell. We are continuing with chapter six today on ratio, proportion, and percent. And today we're going to be talking about solving percent problems with proportions. So you might remember that in the last section we talked about solving percent problems with equations. This is a different way to do it that some people prefer. So the objectives in this section are to write percent problems as proportions and then solve percent problems. So the way that you set up a, a, a percent problem as a proportion is like this. You write the amount over the base and set that equal to the percent over 100. Or if you prefer being lazy, you can write it as A over B equals P over 100. So one thing that you have to remember if you're going to do it this way is which number is the amount and which number is the base, all right? The percent is usually pretty obvious, right? So uh, I think the easiest way to remember which number is the base is that it is almost always the number that comes after the word of. So you're gonna see that in this example. So they want us to translate this into a proportion. We're not going to solve it yet. 35% of what number is 28? 35 is the percent. What number is the base because it comes after the word of? And then 28 is the amount. So notice that the amount is the part compared to the whole. Sometimes the amount can be larger than the base. Okay, so as a proportion, that would look like this. Notice they're using B for base. Okay, and then if you had to solve that proportion, uh, we went over that earlier in this chapter, and we're going to have some examples like that later. There's your amount, there's your base, there's your percent. So here's another example. As usual, at any time you want to try one of these uh, yourself, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll compare notes. So this one says 120 is what percent of 360? 120 is the amount. There's the percent. And the word, uh, or the number 360 comes after the word of, so that makes it the base. So now we're going to go amount over base equals percent over 100. And that's going to look like this. They're using the letter P for the unknown percent. While I'm thinking about it, let me just point out one advantage of doing it this way. Um, overdoing it as an equation is that you if the if the unknown number is the percent uh, you will not have to convert it from a decimal into a percent it will automatically come out as a percent so you'll probably see that in an example here here's another one go ahead and try this one if you're feeling frisky what number is 95% of 75? So this time, what number is the amount? 95 is the percent. And because it comes after the word of, 75 is the base. So amount over base equals percent over 100 looks like this. All right, now we're actually going to start solving these things. What number is 60% of 55? What number is the amount? 60 is the percent. 55 is the base, it comes after the word of. So there's our proportion, which we are now going to solve. So we have A over 55 equals 60 over 100. Now, they have simplified the fraction 60 over 100. You don't technically have to do that at this point. And now what they've done here is they have cross multiplied. Remember, the easiest way to solve a proportion 
which is an equation that says one fraction equals another fraction, is to cross multiply. Just be careful. Sometimes I get nervous about cross multiplying because I'm afraid that students are gonna do it whenever two fractions are in the same zip code. The only time we use it really is, well, we use it for two things. We use it for solving proportions and we also used it for determining whether uh, fractions are equivalent. Uh, and those two things are kind of the same thing, but we definitely don't use it for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, or any of that. So, oops, lost track of my mouse here. Give me a sec. There we go. A times five equals 55 times three. 55 times three is 165. So now we will divide both sides by five. And that's going to give us A equals 165 divided by five, which is 33. So 33 is 60% of 55. Next example, 45% of what number is 36? So let's translate that into a proportion. 45 is the percent. What number is the base? It comes after the word of, which makes 36 the amount. So amount over base equals percent over 100. Looks like this. Uh, and again, they're going to simplify 45 over 100, which you really don't have to do at this point. If you were to cross multiply uh, in this proportion and then solve it, uh, you would still get the right answer. Probably just trying to keep us in the habit of simplifying our fractions. So now when we cross multiply, we get 36 times 20 equals B times nine. 36 times 20 is 720. And if we divide both sides by nine, we get that B is 80. So 45% of 80 is 36. All right, I believe this is the last example. What per of 120 is 78? All right, so hopefully you'll pause the video and try this one, and then we can compare notes. Okay, so what percent? The percent is the unknown number. 120 is the base. 78 is the amount. So amount over base equals percent over 100. Looks like this. And they simplified 78 over 120. Again, you really don't have to do that. Uh, and then when we cross multiply, 13 times 100 equals 20 times P. 13 times 100 is 1,300 equals 20 P. If we divide both sides by 20, we get that P is 65. So 65% 65 of 120 is 78. And that's the end of section 6.4.